Let's talk about affirmative defenses. Now, what are affirmative defenses? Now, they would come at the end of the responses to the numbered allegations. And affirmative defenses are, you know what? It, yes, some of your allegations may be true, but besides that, I've got defenses to your case. Um, now, one of the very, we've talked about this already, which is standing. Um, now, in your motion to dismiss, uh, you might have said, look, you know, like when we looked at the, in the sample uh, complaint before, that plaintiff does not appear, in fact does not, have standing to sue the defendant because there wasn't a proper endorsement chain. And so in the motion to dismiss, in this case, I raised the fact that there was no standing. Guess what? The judge denied it. Clear as day, never in a million years should have been denied. But they did, and that's what they do. So in my answer, then, I file an affirmative defense that raises standing as an issue. So there are many different types of defenses that you can raise. There's only a few that in general you're gonna raise in foreclosure cases, all right? Let me very quickly, I'm just gonna run through a list of things that you can have, and down the road somewhere we'll talk about that in more detail, but for now I'll just mention the ones that are very uh, specific to foreclosure cases. But now, lack of standing, definitely gonna have, it, it, probably in all cases, as much as you can. Um, there's unclean hands, which is they didn't do the right thing by you, and as a result they shouldn't be able to foreclose on you. Maybe they didn't do modifications, maybe they jerked you around the process. Um, TILA violations, Truth and Lending Act violations. Typically these are very um, uh, technical and things that we are not gonna discuss right now. Uh, but if there is a TILA violation, it can be a very good defense to the case. Now, RESPA violations, this is the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. Um, if somewhere along the way there is a RESPA violation, now typically it's having to do with, um, um, you know, they didn't notify you, things like that. Um, that's a potential defense that you can raise in the foreclosure. Um, the, there's HOPA violations, H-O-E-P-A violations. Um, again, very technical for here. Let's not. I'm probably not going to raise it in most of these cases. Unfair and deceptive trade practices. Um, you know, sometimes that happens, and I'll tell you, I have a friend of mine that um, just filed a, a, what we call a UDAP, um, uh, Unfair and Deceptive Trade Practices Act against someone who, because the mortgage company told them that they uh, weren't going to do a modification because the investor said that the guidelines wouldn't allow them, he asked to see the guidelines. They couldn't produce them because there were no guidelines. Um, so he filed for an unfair and deceptive trade practice. So if they'd done something that's just wrong, um, that's potentially uh, uh, an affirmative defense that you can raise. Servicer abuses. Um, happens all the time, uh, you know, like the service or the one who collects your payment from you, they don't do the proper things right, they don't give you proper notice, um, they don't apply your monies correctly, that's potentially something you could raise. Um, servicer RESPA violations, again, something if they don't comply with RESPA, we're going to talk about that in detail somewhere down the road, um, that's something else you can raise as an affirmative defense. Uh, FCRA violations, this is Fair Credit Reporting Act violations, so if they've been reporting that you've been late for three years, on your credit, uh, but you have yet to miss a payment, um, they have probably violated the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and that's something that you can raise as an affirmative defense. Um, FDCPA, this is the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Um, if they've tried to, if they've done bad things in trying to collect the debt from you, um, then that may be an affirmative defense that they can raise. If they called your neighbor and said, hey, do you know where that deadbeat is because he owes the mortgage company lots of money, um, that's a violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And again, something you can raise as an affirmative defense. Um, the Service Member Civil Relief Act. If you're an active member in the military, the mortgage companies are very restricted on what they can do um, to foreclose on your house. And so if you are an active military, and this is something we're going to look at down the road, now this is potentially a very good affirmative defense to your foreclosure. If you're not active military, not going to help you. Uh, and then uh, violations of the pooling and servicing agreement, the PSA. Uh, if you have a securitized trust, like we actually had as a plaintiff in our complaint, uh, one of the defenses that you can raise is that they violated the terms of the securitized trust, which is contained in the giant document about this that called a pooling and servicing agreement. Again, for purposes of this right now, uh, this is a little uh, broad, a little too technical for you, uh, and we're going to walk that through way down the road. But for now, I just want you to be aware of the affirmative defenses. Which ones are you almost always probably just going to throw in there? Probably almost always the, um, the lack of standing. That's one of the very first things we're going to look at. Um, unclean hands. You know, they did something bad to you, uh, and if 
they didn't do the acceleration clause like they're supposed to, they didn't give you notice, um, we would raise that as an affirmative defense because uh, they didn't do what's called a satisfy a condition precedent, which means prior to filing the case, they should have given you notice and they didn't. And that's something you can certainly raise and I always do if they didn't do it.